Hi there, my name is Sandra from Create in Spain. Today I'm going to show you how to make a layered piece of artwork like this so that you can cut it out either from wood, acrylic or paper, whatever it is that you want to make it from. So the first thing to do is to have an iPad and have Procreate loaded. This is by far the easiest way of creating artwork or adjusting artwork for cutting of whatever it is that you need to cut. Whether you have a vinyl cutting machine or if you have a CNC or if indeed you also have a laser cutter. But this is one of the easiest ways that you can possibly make the artwork to do that. It does require an iPad and it does require an Apple Pencil. Now I say Apple Pencil, all the Apple Pencils, as far as I'm aware, are pressure sensitive. That is important. Maybe these days you can get other ones that are pressure sensitive with the Apple iPad. I don't know. I believe in making life as easy for myself as possible and so I use the best equipment that I can in order to get the results. Now this happens to be the iPad Pro and the new iPad Pro Pencil. This does have a feature to it which is really handy but it isn't absolutely necessary. I'll explain when I'm using that later on. So the first thing you need to do is to set up your canvas. So tap on the plus on here and pick a canvas size. I'm just going to go for an A4 canvas like that. Set up at 300 dpi. Now if you don't know how to make a canvas, I'm just going to go back into the gallery. Tap on here and if you tap on new you will get the various details that you need to fill in. Now what I am going to show you is how to make a brush blank. A brush blank is simply a blank canvas of a certain colour, a certain size that you can keep for reference and you can create all sorts of different brushes with it. It's very, very easy in Procreate to create a brush. And think of a brush as like a rubber stamp, only one that you can also set to move if you want it to. So I'm going to put in a pixel width of 2048. My height is already set, but I can go to next and I can put it in 2048 there. The other thing that I need to do at the moment, and it's probably going to change in future, but the colour profile for this needs to be set to RGB and not CMYK. For printing purposes, I usually make my files in CMYK, but there is a little glitch in Procreate at the moment that says if you make it in CMYK, your brush isn't going to work properly. So for the moment, make sure your base is RGB. And then you can name your canvas and you just click on create. I'm going to cancel this. So if you come down here, you see I have a brush blank. Get my background color and set it to pure black. Now the easiest way of getting pure black to the palettes Select cards and scroll until you get black and then you can put black onto your canvas. Okay, you can change your background colour to black whoops, by doing the same thing and you can see I've got a layer in here, I can delete that layer and clear it. But my background colour is set to black. Now, when you're tracing things, generally speaking, what I do is I click that off and I have no background colour. But if you click it on, you see your background colour there. And this is what you need to have. All you do is you select white and it must be pure white. So you can select white. There we go. It's got it. And you can draw something on it with the brushes which are already in the software. So for example, you might say calligraphy pen and you can do whatever, okay? And that will be your brush design. To make a brush out of this, what we need to do is to copy it and paste it into a brush. So we can go to the wrench, go down to copy, go up to the brushes, Choose the folder where you want to put your brush. I'm just going to put it in this sample pack. 
click on plus, tap on shape here and edit and then import and then paste and then we can click on done and that is now the shape for our brush stroke path and increase the spacing you can see that the brush stroke is as I designed it there I can adjust lots of different things in here I can adjust the brush properties maximum size so I can make it a lot bigger for example I can go to the Apple Pencil and I can make sure it's always at full opacity so the opacity if I have this altered you might think that's going to be the same opacity all the time but the harder I press or the lighter I press will alter it so if you don't want the opacity altered then you slide that right down and it will always be at full strength so aside from the various different things that you can adjust in there which are for another time that is how to make a brush let's go back to our untitled artwork i've got my sample folder i'm just going to delete this one because i don't want it there we go and i've got several different brushes in here so you can adjust your brushes you can also drag them from one folder to another you just tap on it drag it move it to wherever it is that you want if you swipe left you can either share your brushes or you can duplicate your brushes or you can delete them there's loads and loads of procreate brushes out there for free or you can make your own depending on how comfortable you feel doing it i like making my own it's part of the fun of procreate so i want to do various rings on here but i want to make them all the same a freeform brush and i'm going to take the color out of my background by just tapping that so i have no color background and i'm going to do the very first ring in my design which would be the white one with the clouds so what i'm going to do is just come in here and draw a ring now if it's not wide enough I need to just make my ring wider. This alters the size of your brush stroke and this is the opacity. So keep that at full. Alter that till you feel happy with the size. Mm, yeah, that's more or less it. Hold it there and you get an ellipse created and then you can tap on circle and it will make it a circle. If it's not quite big enough, tap on the selection make sure you have uniform selected and you can make it a little bit bigger like so now we're getting all these little um, lines coming across because i've got snapping on i'm going to turn off snapping because i don't want it and it's just going to be a distraction but i can make it as big as i can fit onto my canvas do not make it go over the canvas edges because that will cut the sides off. I can swipe left and go to duplicate and duplicate this several times. I'm going to hide the one on the bottom and I'm going to lock the one on the bottom because occasionally you might make a mistake and wish that you had that ring playing with nothing else in it that you could copy and paste onto something else. Okay, So that one's not going to come to any harm. I've got several to play with. I'm going to switch the others off just so you can't see them. Now I need to do my clouds. So come up to the pen. I've got my free form selected. But that's probably a bit big. And just do whatever I feel like for a cloud. Now that looks a bit weird. If I draw a line, and I can make it wibbly wobbly and do that, if I hold the tip there, it'll make a straight line for me. Okay, so I can now put in an extra little curve there and drag my color into the shape that I made. So I have a cloud. Very simplified, I grant you, but it's a cloud. There are ways of adjusting it without doing an awful lot of arty crafty stuff by using some of the filters. 
I want to put in another one, so I'm just going to go up here, I think, straight line, and then whoop, 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 and fill. So that could be my first layer. Just draw shapes that you'd like. So we want to lock that one in place because we're done with that one. Choose our next layer. Now the next layer would most probably be the trees. So I want these big trees to be black. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go up here and I'm going to pick black for my colour. Go to my brushes and I've got a tree brush here. Oh, the wonders are being spoiled. If I tap on here, I can place trees. I can make them bigger like so, and I can make them smaller. There we go, got some trees. Now I'm going to hide this white layer because it's irritating me at the moment. Now I'm going to add another tree, I think, over there. We need it to connect to the side, okay? We need it to connect to that. I'm going to drag the colour into the ring as well. And then I'm going to drag the colour under here to fill in that layer. If you have any little blanks that are showing up, gaps in it, you can go to the freeform brush and you can just scribble and remove any blanks that you got. If there are any, lock that one and make that one invisible. Bring up another layer, tap it so we can see it. So this one would be my meadow. And for my meadow, I want to have a dark green. So I can pick any color. Now I can go to the disc color. I can tap on a green color. And if I drag this, you can see that the color up here changes. So I could use that. I'm going to make my disc that color bit too dark I think. So make it slightly paler than that. Just drag it in. Yeah, that will do fine. And for this one, I just want my freeform brush. Do that. And I want a little sort of, I don't know, roadway in there. It may or may not show, but I can just go to the eraser and then just do, whoops, way too big. Just do a little curve line like that. That's brilliant. That's all I need it to do. So I'm going to lock that one and turn it off. And the next one I need to see is the one for the ferns and the grasses, whatever it is um, that's in the foreground. Tap on that layer, pick a different color. Gonna go for a yellowy green. There we go. So now if I go to my brushes, you can see I've got a fern brush. This is one I made myself simply by drawing with a calligraphy brush onto a brush blank. Let's see how big this is. Okay. Barrel roll can change the position or change, not only the position, but change the rotation of your brush stroke. So for example, if I come here you can see, hopefully, that that is moving around because I'm moving my pencil. But as I rotate the pencil, it changes direction. So that is something that you can do in Procreate now. If you don't have that, if we undo our brush stroke, what we can do is we can add another layer and we can draw in this layer. So we're not going to make a mess of our circle. We can draw in this layer. So come in with my little firm. I can then select it and I can rotate it and drag it to where I need it to be. So you can still do it, it's just that there is a manual way of doing it. So I'm going to squeeze those two layers together, which will combine them, because I'm just going to carry on using my brush. I'm putting some ferns in, I'm going to make them a bit bigger, and now you notice there I went over the line. 
I'm just going to tap undo and make sure the next one that I do does not. I'm going to take the brush size down a bit because it's getting a bit too big. And make it a bit bigger. Now if I was just doing this for art purposes, I could change the colour of these as well. That's the size and the direction. Okay, that will be fine. Now in the original one that I did, I also used these funny little shapes as a kind of leaf type shape. So I put some of these in. And the other thing I did was, I didn't use the freeform, I went down to calligraphy and I used a calligraphy pen because this, if you press harder as you go down, gives you different widths. Don't like that one. I'm going to do that one. So you know, start hard and go up, or you can start very soft and then press harder. And I'm happy with that. Now, the other thing I wanted to mention, if I had gone over the edge of this, let's do one quite deliberately with a fern. Let's go back to, sorry, not there, my sample pack and do a fern. I'm going to do a really big fern. Oh dear, I've gone over there. What you do is you would come in with a eraser and you can erase that but maybe you've gone a bit too far or maybe you think you've got it a bit wobbly on the edge now this is where these extra layers come in because what i would do is i pick up this layer i would make it visible and i would change the layer to green so if i drag that on there and we look at the layer we can see it's now green and then I will drag that layer and I will put it over the top. So we now have it completely repaired as it should be. So I'm going to undo all these various steps that I did because I didn't want that fern in there in the first place. There we go, got rid of it again. So I've now got all my different layers and I could if I wanted to get rid of these. So all I need to do now is to switch all my layers on and rearrange them so that they are in the correct form. So I need to unlock. That layer is empty, can get rid of that one. So at the moment, I need to put this one underneath. I want my trees to go there, I think. Then I've got my meadow, which is fine. And I need to have this layer on the top and there we have it when you export this it's very important that you export it as a png one thing i forgot to mention with xtool creative space it doesn't like white layers so come into your white layer and pick a different color it can be any color you like i'll go for blue for example and change the color it doesn't like it for whatever reason. Um, yeah, it's just one of those things. It doesn't make any difference to your design because you're going to trace it and cut it out of wood or acrylic or whatever it is. Just make it a different color so the program can trace it. If you're using shortcuts a lot to do your tracing, it doesn't matter, it picks up white. So that is going to be sent to my laptop in individual layers and then I can import them into whatever software I'm choosing to use. And you tap on your actions, you go to share, and instead of using these top versions up here, you come down to share layers, and you tap on PNG files. When you do that, you choose where you want to send it to, and I send it to my desktop or my laptop as it happens, but it will do it in individual layers. You can import each layer separately onto a separate canvas 
in whatever software you want or put them in the same canvas, it's up to you. But because it's a PNG file with a transparent background, it's a really easy trace. So I'm on my laptop now and I'm going to pick the first layer, which is untitled. I could have titled it if I wanted to, but I didn't. And, and there we have it. But this is just an image. If you go to the layers folder, you can see it's just an image. It's not anything that's going to cut. That would automatically try engraving, which obviously we do not want. What you do want to do is go to trace and you can auto trace it and you can then go to save. And then now when you move that aside, you can delete the image and you just got your traced line. Now, the one thing that you might want to do if you find you've got a relatively complicated design is go to the edit and go to simplify. Now, depending on the severity of your auto simplify depends on how many nodes it will take out and it may well change the shape. So be careful with it but you can get it to take out excess nodes. And so I need to go to done. And that way your laser will cut it more quickly because the more, the more nodes you have, the more complicated a cut is. You do that with each individual layer that you are importing. So if we go to canvas one, we just go to this and then we import another one. So we can go to the next one, which will be the trees, trace it, save it, get rid of the image. We can see all the little gaps now that we might have. You might want to keep the gaps in. You might decide you don't want to keep the gaps in. It's your choice. Go to edit. Go to simplify and go to confirm, done. And we've got a much simpler shape now. And to be fair, this is perfectly acceptable for a layered picture. No problem at all. Go to this one again and add another canvas on here. Go to import and next we want this one. It doesn't make any difference which order you import them in because you're making them individually anyway. But go to trace, go to save, and I can go to simplify. Yeah, that's fine. And go to done, get rid of that. The reason I get rid of the picture is simply to keep the file size down. The more information you have in there, uh, the bigger your file size. And lastly, we want this one here, which is our ferns and things. Again, that's going to be a relatively complicated one. So go to trace it and go to save. Now I'm just going to move this to one side at the moment and keep this here while I do the edit and simplify. Go to confirm. Let's see what it's going to have done. And that's taken a huge amount of detail out of it. So would I necessarily want to have all that detail taken out? Probably not. So I will take that away. I will go to my image again. I will go to trace and I will do that. And then if I wish to, I can go into edit and simplify. I can choose. So simplified nodes are down to 413 from 2,336. Ouch. If I do that, it's up at 113. If I do that, it's 700. Right, okay. So on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being the lowest, that's taken it down to 766, which is probably a little bit too much. I would probably choose to cut this, um, particularly since I'm going to be using wood, I would probably cut it as it is. So there we are. Now you know how to do it in Xtool Creative Space. For those who are doing it in Shortcut Slot, I will show you that as well. So importing into Shortcut Slot for Getting your SVG is something that can be easier. You just click on SVG import, pick your file up, 
and it will open it automatically and you will have your cut lines. If I go to preview, you can see you've got cut lines there. So that's the first one done. You can open separate pages if you so wish. It's entirely your choice. We can import another one. Let's import this one here. And that'll take a fraction longer. You can see it has a heck of a lot of nodes. Let's go to path and simplify. 3675 down to 1804 is definitely worth doing, but it's more detailed than it was when I put it into Xtool Creative Space. So there is a difference in the quality of the trace that is done. So you just go through the whole lot, just importing the SVGs. Couldn't be easier. When it comes to exporting, if you want it to be the same size, pretty much as it is if you're using Shortcut Slot, then export it at 72 DPI for going into Xtool Creative Space. And that's it. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Come back and watch some more. I'm a crafter who designs and bought machines to use so that I could make things with my designs rather than buying a machine and then going for designs that I could find in order to cut. So I do do different tutorials on different cutting software, different design software, different ways of using different materials for crafting, different ways of putting things together, and I design a lot of my own stuff. So whereas it's not necessarily vinyl cutter specific or laser cutter specific or CNC cutter specific, I do a little bit of all of it. Okay, thanks for watching. See you soon. Take care now.